Good morning, and welcome to worship this 15th Sunday after Pentecost. For those of you visiting with us today, I am Frank Harpster. I'm the senior pastor here at St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Ocean City, Maryland, and we welcome you to our online worship service. It is good that we can worship together safely from our own locations. Let's take a moment now and quiet our hearts and our minds and turn our attention to the Lord that we come to worship this day. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, hear the good news. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Son, as members of each 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our worship continues as we hear God's holy word for this day. Good morning. The first reading for this, the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, comes to us from the 50th chapter of Genesis, reading verses 15 through 21. An introduction to this reading is as follows. After Jacob's death, the brothers of Joseph begged for forgiveness for the crime they had done against him. You intended to do me harm, Joseph said, but God used this as an opportunity to do good and save many lives. And now the reading. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So, have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all God's benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. O Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You make known your ways to Moses, and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You will not always accuse us, nor will you keep your anger forever. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high 
above the earth. So great is your steadfast love for those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so you have compassion for those who fear you, O Lord. The second reading for this, the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, comes to us from the 14th chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Romans, reading verses 1 through 12. An introduction to this reading is as follows. This Christian community has significant struggles with diversity. Here, Paul helps us understand that despite different practices in worship and personal piety, we do not judge one another. All Christians belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for all of us and will judge each of us. Now the reading. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, Abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter, verses 21 through 35. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason... The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, 
His Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all of his possessions, and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord let that servant be released and forgave him the entire debt. But that same servant, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow servants, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he could pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, in Christ there is nothing we can do that would make you love us more perfectly or completely than you do now. And there is nothing that we can do that will cause you to love us less perfectly or completely than you do now. We are yours. We are safe. You will never let us go. Give us ears to hear your word, mouths to proclaim your love, hearts to extend your forgiveness, and empower us to live out your grace. We ask this through Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning begins with Peter asking the question that has undoubtedly been on our hearts, if not on our lips, perhaps more times than we care to admit. How often, Lord? Or some translations say, how many times, Lord? How many times, Lord, must I forgive someone who sins against me? You can almost hear the angst in Peter's voice, the pain or the anger in his heart. How often, Lord, how many times, Lord, must I forgive that person who hurt me or abused me or neglected me? How many times, Lord, should I forgive that person who wronged me or my family? How many times, Lord, should I forgive the one who caused me so much pain or anger? How many times, Lord, should I forgive that person who, and you fill in the blank. Peter has a problem with forgiveness and making a generous suggestion that forgiving a person seven times should be enough. In his mind, or in his heart, Peter believed that forgiving seven times is possibly doable, that he could probably find the courage or the strength to forgive someone seven times, and he seems comfortable with that offering. But notice the response that Jesus gives to him. I tell you not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Let's face it, forgiveness is never easy. It is a grace from God. Surely to forgive one's brother or sister up to seven times is pretty generous. After all, there has to be a limit. At least Peter thought so. But we know that's not the case. According to Jesus, 77 times. No limit endless and ongoing. By the grace of God, that is how our Lord forgives us and loves us endlessly. Peter must have been shocked to know that the path to forgiveness has no end. 
But we know later he will be thankful because Jesus indeed forgives him, even when he denies even knowing him, not once, but three times. He saw that if God never stops forgiving him, he must try to forgive others. We are reminded this morning very clearly that only those who forgive belong in God's kingdom. But let's face it, in our human brokenness, forgiveness can be one of the most difficult challenges in our lives, forgiving others and forgiving ourselves. C.S. Lewis wrote, everyone says forgiveness is a lovely idea until they have something to forgive. But when I fail to forgive, I am shackled to the evil which has been done to me. I cannot move forward. How free am I? Or am I tied to resentments? Folks, the reality is, we don't forgive someone for their benefit. We forgive them for our benefit. To free us from those bonds of resentment. To open our hearts to love in the ways we are called and empowered to love. The very ways that God loves us. Forgiveness is something very creative. It requires us to go beyond the existing facts. Forgiveness means focusing on the person beyond what he or she has done. In choosing to forgive, we make a choice to no longer live in that pain or that anger, to no longer allow that situation to hold us hostage. Forgiveness means that we must look past who we think that person is based on their actions and recognize whose we know they are. Beloved children of God, sinful beings just like you and I, our sisters and brothers in Christ. In our human brokenness, we often have this misconception that forgiving someone somehow suggests that their horrific acts that they did against us somehow become okay or acceptable in that act of forgiveness. But nothing is farther from the truth. We are called and empowered to forgive the person in love, not the act. Paul reminds us in his letter to the Romans that Pastor Harry read, we do not live to ourselves, and it is not up to us to pass judgment, for we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. Theologian Romano Gardini lifts up that there is no forgiveness if one only wants punishment. Forgiveness means pardoning and letting go completely, creating and making the offender new again. It requires great grace to forgive. The reality is, justice can be the enemy of love and forgiveness. It indicates the normal legal way of proceeding. We often hear people say, we want justice done. But mercy and forgiveness is the way of Christ. It says, I want the person to be fully well and alive again. Jesus took that journey to the cross willingly and lovingly and hung to his death to make sure that we never receive justice from God, that we never get what we deserve. But instead, we receive the fullness of God's grace and forgiveness and mercy and love. The parable of the unjust servant mirrors a legal system that would be considered harsh or inhumane in today's standards. But even within that system, pity and forgiveness are shown to exist alongside revenge and punishment. We need to distinguish the core message of that parable, and that is that human forgiveness must mirror the unlimited mercy grace, forgiveness, and love of God, that it must mirror that agape, God's unconditional, unending love. 
keeping in mind that while forgiveness is one of the most demanding aspects of Christ's life, keeping in mind that while forgiveness is one of the most demanding aspects of Christ's teaching, it is also a gift of grace for the one offering the forgiveness as well as the one receiving it. Every time we pray the Lord's Prayer, we use those words that our Savior taught us. And that includes, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Luther says about this petition of the Lord's Prayer that we pray our Father in Heaven would not look at our sins or deny our prayer because of them that we are neither worthy of those things for which we pray, nor have we deserved them. But we ask that God would give them all to us by grace. For we daily sin much and surely deserve nothing but punishment. So we too sincerely forgive and gladly do good for those who sin against us. Our readings this morning remind us that if we must be prepared to forgive 77 times, we must also be ready to ask for forgiveness and believe that we are forgiven 77 times. As we discern this morning's text, I invite you to think about and to pray about how the call to forgiveness affects you and your life. Remembering that as Christians, we are called and empowered to forgive and go on forgiving, to let go of our grievances and resentments. They are burdens on us, not the one we resent. I invite you to think about and to pray about, does forgiveness flow back and forth freely in your relationships with others? Or is it a rarity in your life? Thanks be to God that our Lord forgives us 77 times and more, not because we deserve it, but because we don't. What we receive from God, we are given freely. As we acknowledge that what is good in our lives comes from God, we pray for the generosity we need to be that very grace and mercy and forgiveness and love for others, trusting that every time we fall down, every time we fall short, every time we get it wrong, every time we screw up, we are loved and we are forgiven and we are given another chance every time. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, Peter asked, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? Galatians 6.1 reminds us that if someone is caught in a sin, we who are spiritual should restore that one gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Lord, we often wonder what is fair. How often should I forgive the same person? Colossians 3.3 3 tells us, Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgives you. As Peter, we ask, Is it enough to forgive someone seven times? Jesus said, If the same person sins against you seven times and returns back to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive. Jesus empowers us to forgive, not seven times, but 77 times. Lord, please remind us daily that love is not rude. Love is not self-seeking. Love is not easily angered. And love keeps no record of wrongs. Gracious God, give us grace to love and to forgive one another as you love and forgive us, not because we believe they deserve it, but because we know 
that we don't. Amen. Please join me as together we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You welcome us, O God, even when we are weak in faith. May we strengthen others in their faith, even in the midst of our own weaknesses. Strengthen faith in congregations through Bible studies, Sunday schools, confirmation classes, and youth ministries especially now as creativity and perseverance in these endeavors are so important. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The heights of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation. Where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, we look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless all leaders with patience and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Bring healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who hunger. Heal and comfort those who are sick. And guard Today we lift up all staff, caretakers, and residents in assisted living, especially Jen Anderson, Lisa C., Claire Dykeman, Mim Fritz, Bonnie and Will Yuski. We lift up in prayer Bruce, Pastor Skip McComas and family, Betty Frank, Mary Lou Kaufman, Veronica Bona's mother and mother-in-law, Barb Hager, the family of Richard Berry, Debbie Fling and family, Mary, Mark, Whitney Wheeling, Holly Rogers, Doris Pierce, Lisa Kawata, Larry Haygood Jr., Anna Driscoll, James Long, Leo Tilbury, Anne Hansen. We lift up all caregivers, first responders, all those on the front lines working to save lives. We lift up Sherry Pace, Earl Hewitt, Carl Krim, Melissa Williams, Mark Hendrickson, David Finn and family, Charlie, Gertie Loeffler, Samara Loss, Jackie Tingle and family, Nancy Jacoby, Harry Jacoby, Sonia, Rose, Jody Walensky, Veronica Bona, Brenda Robbins and family, Charles and Terry Hutter, Linda Tice, Kathy Bacot and family, Dee Murphy, Barb and Ron Albright, Jim Stark, Mike Wiley, Lori Frazier, Patty McDermott, Janet Fisher, Rick Latshaw, Lee Kramer, Sandy, Dina Crabello, Ada Mae Shipley, Sue Shoup, Mary Jo Pollock, Kim Raymond, Pastor Sandra Nyler, Frank Harpster, Robin Shipley, Savannah Bona and family, Marty Schroeder and family, George Edel, Gran Dolan, Peggy Ball, Carol Robinson, Billy and Maddie Carter, Bernie Hartline, Kim Council, Steve Ellis, Janet Ellis, Juanetta Lore. We lift up all those serving in the military, especially George Bennett, Justin Carter, Cal Kramer, Katie Kramer, Stephanie DeLuccio, Nicholas Nalbone, David Owens, Joshua Robinson, Nicholas Sorrentino, Ryan Swingler, Kyle Wood. We lift up all those serving as missionaries, especially Aaron Ryan, 
We lift up our bishops, Elizabeth Eaton and Bill Gold. We lift up our partners in ministry. This week we hold in prayer Bethel Evangelical Lutheran Church and Pastor Mark Crystal, Unity Church, Pastor Melissa Lemons and Pastor Clarence Petit. We lift up the GRG4 partners, Community Lutheran Church and Pastor Mark Moulter, Faith Lutheran Church and Grace of God Lutheran Church and Pastor Betty Walensky. And we lift up those you name out loud now or in the quiet of your heart. And guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Protect those who are dealing with ravaging fires and destructive weather. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make our congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, O God, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Our worship continues with the offering. While the church building remains closed and will be until it's safe to open it again, the church is still very much active and open and alive. And that's only possible with your continued support and partnership. We ask that you safely continue to reach out to folks, to your sisters and brothers in Christ, to your family, your friends, your neighbors. Reach out by phone call or text message, email, through social media, through pen and paper. Remind them that they are loved and missed. Find out how they're doing. Share with them what's going on in your life. Stay connected as safely as possible. We also ask for your continued financial support. You may do that by sending a check into the church or using one of our various online giving apps. You can do, that, do so by clicking on the donate button on our church webpage or our Facebook page, or there are various apps out there. We thank you for your continued partnership and support and we thank God for the many ways in which he blesses us and empowers us to bless others. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you pray with me in the words our Savior taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, please remember, and don't ever forget, that neither life nor death, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love and forgiveness of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. I'd like to share a couple announcements with you before we conclude our service.
First, I would like to take a moment to thank Pastor Harry and Deacon Sherry for all that they did to cover for me for the last two weeks, to care for you all, to enable me to take that time to unplug and recharge. I'm truly thankful, and they are both blessings in our church family and in this world. Please know we're doing everything we can to keep you safe and healthy, spiritually fed, cared for, and connected. If there's anything more that we can do for you, please reach out and let me know. We hope that you're doing all that you can to stay home, stay safe, stay healthy, and save lives. Remember, the church building remains closed, and while we can't pre predict exactly when it will reopen, we are hoping for November 1st, which would be All Saints Sunday. We continue to monitor and assess the situation, the process, the safe practices and mandates. We have a team that's working on a building reopening plan. We're collecting all the supplies that we will need to open. While the building is closed, the church is still very much open and active. We continue to physically and spiritually feed the hungry in the world. I've been blessed to share at home outside your home communions with many folks and will continue to do so. I thank you for allowing me to share this with you. If you go to our church website, you have the information uh, to join us for our 9 a.m. worship services online, for our Bible studies at 10 a.m. on Wednesdays, and for our connection or happy hour on Fridays at 4. And again, all that information is on our church website. The Open Door Feeding Ministries continues to hand out packaged food on Wednesdays at 12. We're also doing what we can to assist other feeding ministries in our synod. Pastor Betty Walensky has started a G4 Bible study on the Psalms. That information is in, in your bulletin, and you're invited to join us for that. that the Lord of all the earth would care to know my name, would care to feel my hurt. Who am I that the bright and morning star would choose to light the way for my ever-wandering heart? Not because
because of what you've done, not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, like your day and gone tomorrow. A wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in the wind, still you hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when Please know that I love you, your church family loves you, and most of all, God loves you. Go in peace to love and serve your Lord and neighbor. Thanks be to God.